It doesn't matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. It's a five receiver set. Three to the left, two to the right. On first down, it's Roethlisberger. Over the middle, here to Coates. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll make it second down. Simple slant around, and Parker, really nice hard throw by the quarterback. Nice timing between the quarterback and the receiver. They were perfectly in sync, and he put it right on him on the inside route. Someone moved, flag is out, that's going to be five yards. And that'll drive coaches crazy. You work all week on dealing with loud crowds, on dealing with motion, and then you have a guy jump. Still second down. Second down, nine yards to go. In the throw again. All in by Eaton over the middle. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Five yards on the pickup, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they can do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but they have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks. Those guys will work their way to go. They get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. It would be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, Maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball. That's accurate, yeah. And, and I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their wide running savvy. Now it's Roethlisberger. Brought in by Wheaton. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. Trying to keep the drive going here. This is play number seven on third and two. Third and two, now Roethlisberger. And that would incomplete. It also breaks a string of seven straight completions as well as it leads to a fourth down. Slim hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. They'll go for it with Bell. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. Call it a three-yard game. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. And a new set of downs here after picking up the first on the ground. Roethlisberger on first down. Can't find anyone open. Wheaton with a catch right side. It's a gain of five. And it'll bring up a second down. He had time, was able to survey the field and find a soft spot in that zone coverage. And that's where it gets difficult for a defender, Brandon. You go to your spots on the field that you have to cover, and when the offense finds an area that you're not in, that's where they throw the football. They'll run it now. Out of the gun. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because then you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. He completes it to Bryant. A five-yard gain, and now they're set up first and goal. Impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're going to get a little more rest over. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. D'Angelo Williams, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Steelers are able to close the gap just a bit. 
When you talk about a battle being won in the trenches, that touchdown right there, a lot of credit to the offensive line. Yeah, when you watch them surge across the front, they really created great space for the runner to get in. That's fielded in the end zone. And he will take a knee here. So per the new rules in 2016, this will be brought out to the 25-yard line. The Patriot offense now set to come back out on the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. They'll start things on first down with Deion Lewis. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. I know that every now and then we get in those meetings with coaches, and you almost want to roll your eyes when they talk about staying on schedule when they're moving the football. But would you say a seven-yard run is ahead of schedule? Fourth quarter with the lead, you love that, don't you? No doubt about it, because staying on schedule is trying to get four downs on first down. They did that plus three. And again, this time to the tailback. And he'll get this only up to about the 35. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up in the line of scrimmage as they try to bleed it out. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Eight yards on the pickup there, and it moves the sticks. I always appreciate runners who understand situations. That was just third and inches. No reason to dance around in the backfield and try and break off a bigger play. Just go pick up the first down, and that's exactly what he did. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. This one to Lewis. And he's brought down. A nice carry there of 15 yards. When a coaching staff sees their team run the ball this successfully in the fourth quarter, they're really excited because you can plan for a running game all you want and want to press that advantage when you get it. But for the most part, it's a little bit of a surprise. And right now, they've got to keep that going, want to continue to grind out the clock because... It's definitely in their favor at this stage of the game. Can they close the game out and continue to do exactly what we just saw there? And that's run the football. Big way. 
six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on the big offensive line. Again, here's Blood. And a decent game there as that takes us to the two minute warning. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. They're trying to keep the drive going. This will be play number eight. It's third and two. Gronkowski, slot left. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Brady looking to throw on third and two. To the sideline, and oh, that's well done. Able to drag the feet, he's going to have the first down. And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping, and dragging to make sure he gets it done.